formation of urine. Now, during urine formation, there are three physiological processes which are occurring. It includes glomerular filtration. tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion at the time of urine formation there are three important physiological processes that occur inside kidneys it includes glomerular filtration some substances are filtered here it's called glomerular filtration followed by tubular reabsorption some substances are again taken back into body that is called tubular reabsorption tubular secretion which is also called augmentation in tubular secretion some substances which have not been filtered here they are, they are sent from from the interstitial fluid into the lumen of nephron. So that is called as tubular secretion. We will discuss one after another. Glomerular filtration. Now this area, if I take again, This is efferent arteriole. This is efferent arteriole. Now blood is coming into nephron from efferent arteriole. It starts with A. Now after coming it will it will come to nephron it divides it into a bunch of capillaries that bunch of capillaries is called as glomerulus now again the that group of capillaries combined with it to form efferent arteriole efferent starts with e that efferent arteriole is taking away blood from nephron now observe the difference between the diameter of efferent and efferent arterioles this is larger in diameter this is smaller in diameter so more blood is coming inside the glomerulus but less blood is going outside from the glomerulus as such some pressure builds up inside glomerulus so under the under that pressure some substances are filtered they are filtered from this side into that cup like structure This cup-like structure is called as Bowman's capsule. So there is a pressure build up inside, inside glomerulus. So with the help of that pressure, some substances are pressure filtered from glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. Now we already discussed the wall of glomerulus glomerulus is network of capillaries so in that wall of capillaries you can see pores the small pores are called as fenestrae they are called fenestrae they are around 0.1 microns in diameter so you can see small pores in the wall of simple squamous epithelium of the endothelium of blood capillaries of glomerulus now Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule also contains simple squamous epithelium and the cells which are facing towards the glomerulus. I told you cells facing towards the glomerulus. Now these cells are called podocytes and they are called podocytes because they have got foot like processes. Foot like process. Each cell has got a foot like process like that. So cells, adjoining cells, they come closer like that. 
So you can see in between that foot-like process, you can see some small gaps. So when cells with foot-like process, they come closure. So in between, you can see small gaps. The gaps are called as slit pores, also called filtration pores. You can see slit pores or filtration pores in the wall of Bowman's capsule in, the po in between podocytes. <laughs> so there is slit pores or filtration pores in between the pedicels of pedicels of that cells called as podocytes. So that small gaps are called slit pores also called filtration pores 0.006 to 0.007 microns in diameter they are absolutely small now filtration membrane is simple squamous epithelium it is simple squamous epithelium of glomerulus with its basement membrane followed by Another basement membrane and simple squamous epithelium of Bowman's capsule. Now, this is the filtration membrane. Filtration membranes includes two cell thickness. One cell is the simple squamous epithelium of blood capillaries. Another cell is simple squamous epithelium of Bowman's capsule. And every epithelium contains a basement membrane. So this is the basement membrane for endothelium of blood capillary. This is basement membrane for endoth for simple squamous epithelium of Bowman's caps. Now this makes up the filtration membrane. There are filtration pores. There are fenestrae in case of glomerulus. So there are some pores there, and there are some filtration pores here. They are also called slit pores. So through that slit pores, some substances are filtered from glomerulus to Bowman's capsule. Now if you, if you observe the pressure differences, hydrostatic pressure of glomerular blood that means see inside the glomerulus inside the capillaries the blood exerts some pressure I mean the hydrostatic pressure osmotic pressure exerted by water present inside the blood that is called hydrostatic pressure now the blood present inside glomerulus will be exerting a pressure in this direction, in this direction. That pressure is equal to 60 millimeters of mercury. Now that pressure is opposed by two pressures. One is the blood colloidal osmotic pressure. It is around 32 millimeters of mercury. So since it is opposite, acting in opposite direction, minus 32. Blood colloidal osmotic pressure, what does that mean? The colloids pressure present inside the blood, inside the blood of glomerulus, inside its plasma, there are several colloids, several solutes which are in colloidal form those colloids they are exerting a reverse pressure they they are trying to prevent themselves from being filtered they are trying to stay back in blood they are trying to avoid filtration that that pressure is called the blood colloidal osmotic pressure it acts in a reverse fashion it is minus 32 millimeters of mercury In the capsular hydrostatic pressure, capsular hydrostatic pressure means they, there is a fluid inside the Bowman's capsule. 
this fluid present inside Bowman's capsule see after filtration some fluid has come now fluid present inside the Bowman's capsule is trying to go back because of osmosis because here there is more concentration when compared to here <coughs> some substances are trying to go back so capsular hydrostatic pressure capsular means it's Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure means it is the osmotic pressure exerted by water now whichever fluid present in Bowman's capsule which is trying to go back towards the glomerulus it is called capsular hydrostatic pressure it is minus 18 millimeters of mercury now pressure exerted from this side the first one I mean the hydrostatic pressure of the blood hydrostatic pressure of glomerular blood the hydrostatic pressure of glomerular blood is 60 millimeters of mercury it is opposed by two pressures one is the blood colloidal osmotic pressure blood colloids exert a reverse pressure so they are trying to avoid themselves being filtered that is called as blood colloidal osmotic pressure minus 32 millimeters of mercury and the fluid present inside Bowman's capsule it is trying to go back into glomerulus that that is called as capsular hydrostatic pressure minus 18 so together when when I combine these two it makes up minus 50 millimeters so this this is around minus 50 millimeters so this side 60 this side 50 so net filtration pressure is 10 millimeters of mercury it is called as net filtration pressure 10 millimeters of pressure so that means the fluid exerts more pressure in this direction than this direction so so overall net filtration pressure is 10 millimeters water only so water along with some solutes are filtered from glomerulus towards the Bowman's capsule now when water present in blood is being filtered very very small very small substances are filtered from glomerulus into Bowman's capsule that's why we use the term ultra filtration substances which are having less molecular weight which are very small in size only are filtered from glomerulus into Bowman's capsule remember red blood cells white blood cells blood platelets the larger proteins like albumins, globulins so these substances are not filtered from glomerulus into Bowman's capsule so it is only the water content of blood or blood's plasma and some of the solutes present inside only are filtered so very small substances only are filtered that's why we use the term ultra filtration some smaller proteins are also present but the larger presents larger proteins like albumin globulin they are not they are not present various type of blood elements are absent now substance some substance is filtered it enters into Bowman's capsule now whichever whichever substance which has entered into Bowman's capsule it is called as glomerular filtrate we use the term glomerular filtrate it is called glomerular filtrate it is also called primary urine it is not the finally formed urine it is the first formed urine so urine this this part of urine is called primary urine the urine formed here is the final urine it is called glomerular filtrate substances which are filtered from glomerulus into Bowman's capsule now it includes water it includes various salts sodium potassium chlorides bicarbonates when I say salts hmm? sodium potassium chlorides and bicarbonates it includes wastes like urea uric acid 
creatinine. It also includes glucose and amino acids. Useful substances like glucose and amino acids are also present in that. And toxins, drugs, pesticides, heavy metals, in some conditions, these also poisons produced by various microbes like bacteria. Drugs that we are taking to cure disorders or if residues of pesticides are, are carried under that condition, small traces of that pesticides and if some heavy metals we ingest along with the diet, such heavy metals. So these conditionally but all the above things in all conditions. So that means primary urine generally contains water, salts, base like urea, uric acid, creatine and some useful substances like glucose and amino acids. So these are present inside the primary urine. The first formed urine is actually hypotonic. So here it is hypotonic. Indicating it is less in concentration. Now what is the concentration of the fluid present outside? See up to here, say approximately up to here it is present in cortex. It is present in cortex. And this area is present inside the medulla. So this total area is present inside the medulla. Now, interstitial fluid, fluid present inside the cortex is called as cortical fluid. Fluid present in medulla is called medullary fluid. Together they are called as interstitial fluid. Now, cortical fluid, fluid present inside the cortex, the concentration is around 300 milli osmolols per liter. Yeah. 300 milli osmolols per liter. 300 milli osmolols per liter. That, that is the concentration of fluid present in the cortex. The blood plasma concentration is also 300 milli osmolols. Now, after filtration, I am saying the fluid is hypotonic to cortical fluid or blood plasma. It means everything present in blood has not been filtered. So definitely the concentration of that glomerular filtrate is slightly lesser when compared to the blood plasma or the cortical fluids, cortical interstitial fluids. Now, so this process is called as glomerular filtration. Now, in one minute, the amount of blood which is coming to kidneys it is around 1100 to 1200 ml. 1100 to 1200 ml per minute. That is the amount of blood flow that is coming to kidneys. Remember, the cardiac output is around 5 liters. So that means this is around one fifth of the cardiac output. So kidneys receive considerable amount of blood supply. Now, glomerular filtration rate, glomerular filtration rate, it is called glomerular filtration rate. The rate at which both the kidneys, both the kidneys, the, the rate at which the glomerular filtrate is formed in both the kidneys. Now, when this much of blood is coming, in, in every minute, if I calculate the amount of glomerular filtrate, this is the glomerular filtrate, right? So, glomerular filtrate formed. So, that is around 125 ml per minute glomerular filtration rate. 
when when this much when around 1100 to 1200 ml of blood is coming and going the amount of glomerular filtrate formed here by all nephrons present in both the kidneys it is around 125 ml per minute so at that rate if i calculate in one day around 180 liters per day the amount of glomerular filtrate formed in one day is around 180 liters but we do not contain such a huge quantity of fluids in our body the blood itself is around 5 to 6 liters now out of this but if you observe the final urine formed final urine formed is only 1 to 1 and 1/2 liters or at the max 2 liters now difference between the two 178 and half or 179 liters is again taken back into body it is it is taken back into body at various places hmm? we can see at several places this occurs this process is called tubular reabsorption the second important mechanism is tubular reabsorption there is also tubular secretions some substances they are moving from this side like like h plus ions h plus ions h plus k plus ammonia hmm? see some substances they are moving from the interstitial fluid into the lumen that that process is called tubular secretion or augmentation tubular reabsorption and tubular secretion occurs throughout the renal tubule so from here onwards the next two processes they occur fluid the glomerular filtrate has come into the proximal convulsions into the proximal convoluted tubule now remember it is hypotonic the fluid the glomerular filtrate is hypotonic to cortical fluid now you must remember difference between active and passive transport now is supposing one substance is high in concentration here one low in concentration here so high the one side low on the other side so substances move from high to low concentration without spending much energy so it doesn't require any spending of energy so it is moving from high to low down the concentration gradient it doesn't require energy it's a it's a passive process but if some substances have to move in this direction they are moving from low to high concentration it requires spending of energy so against the concentration gradient hmm? this is down the concentration gradient this is against the concentration gradient against the concentration means from low to high concentration so it requires spending of energy it is an active process even if the concentrations on both the sides have both the sides are equal if i want to move substances it is again active transport only so concentration of a particular substance when it is equal on both the sides or when it is moving from low concentration to high concentration concentration or down the concentration gradient Uh, on some substances high in concentration on one side low on concentration on the other side so down the concentration gradient when substances are moving it doesn't require spending of energy but when substances are moving from low concentration to high concentration low to high concentration against the concentration gradient it requires spending of energy it's called active process likewise when substances on both the sides concentration even when the concentration of a particular substance 
its concentration on both the sides is equal even then the transport of substances is by active transport now when substances when the primary filtrate hmm? now this primary filtrate with these substances it has come into glomerular it has come into bowman's capsid it will undergo tubular reabsorption now from this area by using energy the concentration outside is more when compared to inside i mean inside the lumen the glomerular filtrate concentration is less when compared to cortical fluid so against the concentration gradient sodium is actively pumped so it's a active transport by spending energy sodium is pumped chloride ions will passively follow sodium because of electrical attraction because it's oppositely charged chloride ions will follow sodium ions so in this way sodium chloride has been pumped from glomerular filtrate into the cortical fluid now initially concentration here is less and here is more now 70 to 80% 70 to 80% of sodium chloride and water now see when sodium chloride has moved out by spending energy there is more of sodium chloride outside i mean in the cortical fluid when compared to cortical fluid when when compared to the lumen and compared to the glomerular filtrate from the glomerular filtrate 70 to 80% of sodium chloride is pumped into cortical fluid that is happening by active transport of sodium and because of electrical attraction chloride ions will follow the sodium so sodium chloride is considerable amount 70 to 80% of sodium chloride is pumped from the primary urine into cortical fluid now there is more salt here when compared to glomerular filtrate so automatically water will follow as much of salt so much of water will follow sodium chloride the movement of water is by osmosis only initially it is hypotonic but once salts have moved outside salt concentration outside is in the in the cortical fluid is more when compared to the proximal convoluted tubules lumen so water will move outside by osmosis so 70 to 80% of sodium chloride and water have moved out in the same place by active transport all glucose and amino acids you can see glucose and amino acids 100% of glucose and amino acids glucose and amino acids 100% are reabsorbed back remember we don't have a mechanism where we can only identify harmful substances poisonous substances substances which are extra we don't have a mechanism to directly filter only those substances and i already told you sir, the filtration process is being done based on pressure and only ultra filtration is occurring there now in this area in the proximal convoluted tubule h plus ions bicarbonate ions is a huge amount of bicarbonates are actually filtered whichever bicarbonates are filtered much of the bicarbonates are taken back into the body for exchange of h plus ions in various metabolic reactions h plus ions or protons are formed now the increase in h plus ions acidity increases so 
the H plus ions are exchanged for bicarbonate ions. In this area, ammonium is also being secreted. In the proximal convulsions, H plus ions are protons and ammonia is being secreted. I mean when I say ammonium, it is by deamination of amino acids or proteins. So ammonia and bicarbonates are secreted, sorry, ammonia and H plus ions are secreted and bicarbonates are taken back into body. Now that's what is happening in the proximal convulsions. Now you can see glucose and amino acids are actively transported back into body, sodium chloride by active transport, water by osmosis and there is secretion of H plus ions and bicarbonate into primary urine and uh, some of the bicarbonates are taken back into body. Now such primary urine by the time it has reached the end of proximal convoluted tubule, it is, it has become isotonic. From hypotonic it has become isotonic. Now such isotonic urine, it has entered into Henle's loop. So th this is the Henle's loop. And this is the descending limb of Henle's loop. Now in the descending limb, you can see when, when the primary urine is coming. The primary urine, the urine present inside the descending limb, it is isotonic to cortical fluid. But when you see the medullary fluid, this medullary fluid, the concentration in the medullary fluid is not same like as you see in case of cortex. See cortical fluid throughout the cortic cortex, in the cortical fluid concentration of the fluid see 300 milli osmorals. But in the medullary fluid, the concentration of medullary fluid is not same throughout the medulla. In the outer region of medulla, the concentration is 300. But when you proceed downwards, Like in case of cortex, the outer region of medulla concentration is 300 milli osmolals per liter. The osmolarity of the medullary interstitial fluid we are discussing. So outer region it is 300 but gradually rises to 600, 900 and 1200. If you go towards, see this total area is having 300. This area 600, this area 900, this area 1200. So you can see when you go down from outside towards the inner side of medulla, you can see increasing concentration. So there is difference in the concentration in the outer and inner regions of medulla. Now the primary urine which has come into the descending limb, initially though it is isotonic, isotonic, when it proceeds downwards into the descending limb, it becomes less in concentration when compared to the outer medullary interstitial fluid. So naturally, inside it is less in concentration, outside it is more in concentration. Water leaves the body. So you can see water going outside by osmosis. Some 15%. So this 70% minimum, this 15%, that together 85%, this is called obligate water reabsorption. It is called obligate because see this is obligatory. As much sodium chloride is going, so much of water is, it is following sodium. As much water, how much of water is going outside? As much sodium chloride has left outside, so much water is leaving outside. So it's an obligation, it's a compulsion. So here and here, it depends upon the sodium chloride. In case of descending limb, it depends upon the amount of the medullary interstitial fluids concentration, the amount of water that is pushed outside also depends. So you can see water being absorbed and finally, when you come to the Henle's loop, again concentration has become isotonic. So in descending, the descending limb is such that 